Creatine can help make you bigger, stronger, and faster, but what happens when you stop? Do you lose all that mass, strength, and gains, or are there steps you can take to actually retain your results? Will your body naturally continue to produce creatine at the same levels that it was before you started using it, or will natural creatine production become suppressed from supplementing with it for a certain amount of weeks or months? And will there be any potential health consequences? So how will your organs, your cells, and your body react after stopping creatine? I'm gonna answer all these questions and more in today's video as we take a deep dive inside your body to find out exactly what will happen. Now, one of the first things that people will complain about after cutting out creatine supplementation is that their muscles look flat. Looking flat refers to muscles that appear less full, less pumped, and less defined than usual. This is due to one of the most immediate effects of stopping creatine supplementation, which is a decrease in muscle water content. You see, creatine increases intracellular water retention, which is the accumulation of water within your cells. Specifically here, we're talking about muscle cells. This water retention makes your muscles look fuller and larger. The issue is when you stop taking creatine, this water is gradually lost, leading to a slight decrease in muscle volume. So yes, your muscles will look less full and less pumped. However, it's important to realize that this is not actually muscle loss, but rather it's just water weight you're losing. This effect will usually be more noticeable in individuals who have been taking creatine for an extended period of time, at least four to six weeks or longer. Unfortunately, this can be a little discouraging because you might feel like you're right back to where you were before you took the creatine. It's essential to understand that your actual muscle mass that you gained is still there. It's just the water retention that's gone. So obviously another thing that is gonna happen is that you'll lose a small amount of weight on the scale. Usually this will range from one to three pounds of water weight lost in the first week after stopping, but it can go up higher all the way up to five to seven pounds. The amount of water weight you lose depends on how long you've been using creatine and how much water your body typically retains, which is influenced by other factors such as how much water you drink on a daily basis and how much you usually sweat. Now, after stopping creatine, your muscle creatine stores don't just rapidly drop to zero. First of all, your body naturally produces creatine in the liver, kidneys, and pancreas by synthesizing it from the amino acids glycine, arginine, and methionine. On top of that, the average person consumes about one to two grams of creatine per day from food, primarily from animal-based sources like red meat, chicken, and fish. This is still much less than the amount of creatine you'll be taking in while supplementing, but this is why it's a gradual process, usually taking anywhere from four to six weeks for your muscles to return to baseline creatine levels. One of the downsides of returning to baseline is that you're likely to experience a slight reduction in strength and power output. This is because creatine helps regenerate ATP, which is crucial for high intensity, short duration activities. Adenosine triphosphate provides a lot of energy, but your body can only store a very small amount, just enough for a few seconds of intense activity actually. Creatine helps regenerate ATP faster, allowing for improved performance in short bursts of activity such as weightlifting or sprinting. When you stop taking creatine, your body's ability to replenish ATP goes down, leading to a potential decrease in strength and power output. This reduction won't be noticeable in your day-to-day -day activities, but you might notice it more during intense activities. Most likely you'll experience more fatigue during your lifts when coming off of creatine because the ATP regeneration that creatine provides helps reduce both physical and mental fatigue. So for example, if you normally lift 225 pounds on the bench press for nine reps while taking creatine, you might have to drop to seven or eight reps after stopping. So the change should be small and over time as your body readjusts to lower creatine levels, your performance levels should stabilize at a slightly lower level than where you were when you were supplementing. This decrease in performance can technically lead to a small reduction in muscle mass aside from just the water weight that you'll be losing. Muscle growth is highly influenced by performance overload, which you can achieve by lifting heavier weights over time or performing more reps. So a reduction in strength and power due to having less ATP available in your muscles can lead to less intense workouts and a minor decrease in muscle mass over time. As long as you continue lifting heavy and you maintain your strength levels, if you do lose some muscle, it'll be a very small amount. And overall, you should be able to keep more muscle than you had before you started taking the creatine. To prevent muscle loss, make sure you're trying to still perform intense workouts where you're aiming to lift the same weight for the same total reps that you were doing before stopping creatine. It's fine if your rep count goes down, but you should still do your best to continue lifting exactly like you were beforehand, rather than just giving in to the heightened level of fatigue. 
By maintaining similar activity levels, you should be able to retain most of your muscle mass. It's especially important to not only continue working out hard at the gym, but to also make sure that your diet is on point for muscle growth and muscle maintenance. That means getting at least three quarters of a gram of protein for every pound you weigh daily, and eating a healthy diet full of single ingredient foods, high in macro and micronutrients like chicken, fish, meat, vegetables, fruit, rice, sweet potatoes, and oats. Next, let's talk about the brain because there's a lot of evidence that creatine enhances cognitive function, specifically with tasks requiring short-term memory and quick thinking. In fact, there's a recent study where participants performed cognitive tests while being deprived of sleep, which obviously worsens your cognitive abilities. Researchers found that administering just one single high dose of creatine can partially reverse fatigue-related cognitive deterioration. Many other studies also show that creatine has cognitive benefits for memory and learning. It also can help increase focus, especially when working out. So when you get off of creatine, you may feel less focused during your workouts. Luckily, even though it is true that when you stop taking creatine, the cognitive benefits will subside, the impact on cognitive function is typically very subtle and you'll most likely not notice it in everyday activities. Overall, despite losing the enhancements that creatine provides for your energy levels, your performance at the gym, and the appearance of your muscles, creatine has been proven to be very safe for long-term use. Creatine is one of the most researched supplements and there are long studies that last 10 years or longer that prove that taking creatine and stopping creatine is totally safe. So there really should be no changes to your organs or your overall health. However, you might notice some small changes on a blood test. For example, one thing that might happen when you start taking creatine is that your creatinine levels in your blood will slightly increase. Creatinine is a broken down byproduct of creatine. So when your muscles don't fully use all the creatine that you get from supplementation, your body will convert it into creatinine. So if you were to get a blood test while taking creatine, it could show that your creatinine levels are higher than normal. Obviously, if you stop taking creatine after about a month or two, your blood creatinine levels should return to baseline. In either case, creatine can definitely have an effect on your blood creatinine levels, but this doesn't mean that it's harming your kidneys or your liver. In fact, scientific reviews have found no adverse effects on kidney function in people with healthy kidneys, even with much higher doses than the five grams of creatine that's recommended for supplementation on a daily basis. Now, one last thing that might happen after you stop taking creatine is absolutely nothing. This is likely to be the case if you're a non-responder to creatine supplementation, which actually affects a large portion of the population. Up to 33% of people, or about one out of every three people, won't experience any of the benefits from taking creatine at all. They can take the correct dose for years, but not experience any increase in intramuscular water retention, muscle growth, or strength gains. There are many reasons why someone might be non-responsive to creatine, such as having higher baseline levels of creatine naturally, or having fewer type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers. But if you're a non-responder and you stop taking creatine, you'll obviously most likely notice no changes at all. So all in all, when you stop taking creatine, you may notice some changes in your body, but not all of them are negative. The most immediate effect is the loss of water weight, which can make your muscles appear less full or flat. This is not actual muscle loss, so don't allow it to discourage you. While you might also experience a slight reduction in strength and power, this is because your body's ability to regenerate ATP decreases when you stop taking creatine. However, by maintaining intense workouts and a proper diet, you can retain most of your muscle gains. You shouldn't really notice a subtle decline in focus and short-term memory since these effects are typically minor. Overall, you shouldn't worry about starting or stopping creatine since it has been proven safe for long-term use with no significant impact on your kidneys or liver health. So that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to see quick results without all the trial and error that most people go through when trying to build muscle or burn fat, I highly suggest you try my free six-week shred. It's a done-for-you plan that motivates you from day one to day 42 to follow through and do your part. And when you follow the personalized meal plan and the three workouts every single week, you'll get amazing results. You'll also have a full recipe book so you have a large variety of foods to choose from and you'll have a coach to answer any questions and help you every step of the way. To find out more, you can click the link below in the description or you can head straight on over to the website at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.